Hello and welcome to another day of landscape photography and today I am in a spot on the coast that doesn't get photographed very often and there's a good historical reason for that which I'll get into in a minute but I'm on the Durham coast and it's a great day to do some long exposure photography so that's what we're going to do explore this location I'll get hopefully a few nice seascape style long exposure pictures so I hope you come with me Let's go. One of my favorite places to shoot by far is the coast because you can shoot at the coast pretty much any time. That includes days when it's sunny, days when it's overcast like today, winter, autumn, summer, any time is good shooting at the coast and in any weather as well. I really like days like today though where it's overcast and you can put those ND filters on and really maximize your long exposure photography. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. I've actually got an image exposing as we speak a five minute and 28 second exposure. That's the beautiful thing about this kind, these kind of cliffs. It's similar at Flamborough Head in Yorkshire. I can just set my camera up here on the cliff and get down and get some really interesting images of the cliff and the water and the shape. And it's just really easy and really nice location to shoot. Composition wise, I think it's really nice. It's going to be using that beautiful curve that you can see behind me there in the shoreline, guiding me up around the image along with the shoreline as well and that foamy water as we guide us round to that really nice cliff there in the distance. The headland that we shot in the first image is then a bit beyond that, adding just that tiny subtle little bit of interest there as well. Now, I do have some really nice tones in the clouds as well. But I think once I smooth that out, I'll still capture all those nice tones in the sky. So I think it will just look really good. Now, like I said, I'm exposing. I've got a 16 stop filter on the front, which is allowing me in these bright conditions to get that five minute plus exposure. Because I'm using a DSLR, I'm covering up the eyepiece as well. Yeah, I mean, really straightforward, but there's just so much shape, lots of curves and triangles cutting into the same image and with that smooth area that the long exposure provides just puts more emphasis on that shape so i'm just looking forward to this five minute exposure finishing so i can see that image so i'll just wait for a couple more minutes and then we'll be ready to take a look right the exposure's finished so let's take a look and oh yes i, I was right the tones in the sky and in the sea where you've got the foamy edge to it just look really, really nice. So much shape in there. Really, really interesting. What I'll probably have to do is crop down to a four by three or a square crop because where I'm stood, I just couldn't quite get all of the cliff in the foreground here outside of the frame. So that is creeping into the bottom left hand side of the frame. It'll still look great, but as you go for the long exposure, it makes it into something different where it, it emphasizes all the shape as you take the texture out of the sky and out of the sea, the whole image just becomes about shape and the relationships between the moving things and the static things in your, in your image. And that is why I love long exposure photography so much. Ah, yes, as I say, creamy and delicious every time it gets me excited. <laughs> we're down on the beach now and I'm set up I want to capture these absolutely fantastic orange rocks now I'm with my dad today and he used to be a chemistry teacher and with the industrial past of this beach he thinks that it's like an iron oxide deposit something's rusting basically and out at sea and that's then getting washed up and then left on these rocks I don't know if you can see behind me the bit of beach that I'm stood on is slightly higher and sort of slopes down towards the cliff there rather than back to the sea. The rocks that are on the bank that slope back into the sea don't have this orange colour. I think what's happening is that iron oxide is being 
lifted up onto this shelf when there's high tide and then just deposited as the water just flows back in but then gets left on, on this bit of the beach. Very interesting. We're not quite sure, but that's my dad's best guess. But I think they're going to make for a fantastic photograph and help tell the story of this beach as it is right now in 2019. But I've found a nice little cluster here and I'm getting down low with the camera to this kind of level because there, look, look behind me now, you get that nice orange foreground which I think just is really interesting, actually quite unique. I'm in quite close but I'm at, I'm at 28 millimeters at the moment to try and fill the frame as much as possible with these orange rocks. What I'm going to do is use a 10, a 10 stop filter with the current bright conditions that I've got about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That'll make for, I've already worked it out, it's actually a 38 second exposure. Now there's quite a lot of interest in the clouds behind me, so I don't want to wipe all that out with a very long exposure. Uh, but it'd be nice just to smooth the sea out a little bit and then still get some of the detail in the clouds. So I'm just going to go onto the bulb timer, uh, into the bulb timer. So let me just try and get out the filter and screw it on. Onto the front here, like that. And then one, two, and that will go for 50 seconds. I think that should be about right. 50 seconds, and then we'll have a look what that looks like. Yeah, really interesting. So this area of the Durham coast is actually, it actually means quite a lot to me because my grandmother and grandfather were from this area and my grandfather was a miner. My, all my family have a mining background on both sides of my family, but my, um, my maternal grandfather mined right in this location. And when I was little, we used to come down here with my grandma and this beach was completely black where all the, the waste from the coal mining was pumped out to sea and then it used to just wash back into the beach which just really made it not a very pleasant place to be. I'm actually stood on an area where if you look at this picture here I think this is exactly where the conveyor belt went out into the sea where it was used to dump stuff and you can still see these sort of concrete foundations basically. Now What's quite encouraging, when we think about some of the damage that we cause as humans to the landscape and the environment, this beach is actually proof that all is not lost because it's been cleaned up since then. It's taken quite a long time to do that, but now nature has just taken it back. There is still some bits of coal waste and other rubbish on the beach, but it's a lot better. It's a really nice place to be now and on the whole, it still feels very natural. So for me, that's quite an encouraging thing, but it's great to be here today and try and capture it as best I can in these conditions. I've caught a shot from here before when I was scouting it out before, but conditions aren't quite right. The composition isn't quite right for me today. All the interest is over on that side. And there isn't as much interest as we go towards here. So I would quite like to find another little location for my last shot of the day. Maybe just a very straightforward one, but there are paragliders all around as well. So it's a great day. Not too much wind, but obviously just enough. Now let's go and find one more shot. So I'm set up for my last shot of the day. And now that the tide has come in, there's not actually that much beach left to play with. So I've stayed up on the cliffs, just very close to where I was a minute ago. These rocks and these cliffs are just so interesting. They're full of detail, full of shape. And I've decided to go for something just a little bit more abstract and using the long exposure to make, again, make that work, to use the motion in the sea, smooth that out to highlight the shape as best I possibly can. Now, I found a little bit down there, you might be able to see it with the little kind of archway and that fantastic triangular shape of that rock as the sea has just eroded that away and created that really nice triangle. That's what I'm focusing in on with the 70 to 200 on the camera and I'm right in at 200 millimeters. So I'm basically just filling the frame 
with that triangular shape cutting in from the right hand side of the frame getting that small archway in there as well because that will add some interest to it now this time I'm going to put a 10 stop filter on the front currently f11 one tenth of a second ISO 100 it's going to give me about a one minute and 25 second exposure what that is going to do as the water is swirling around and washing over the triangular shape just like that that rock it's just cast there's water cascading down it in that nice white bright color what that's going to do is just brighten up the image add an ethereal feel to it and the whole triangular rock shape should be surrounded by that nice white foam as it exposes over that one minute i might have to crop in from the top a bit because of that rock in the distance but i'm excited about this it's a very straightforward composition but these abstract shots are just always fun to try and pull something interesting out getting in tight getting in close being sort of slightly more artistic in your thought process around the shape it's just an exciting thing to try and to do so let's go ahead and shoot it i've got the camera focused i'm in manual focus now so i'm just gonna put the filter onto the front this is a 10 stop filter very very cheap this one but still really rather good go into bulb mode into the settings again bulb timer on i've put the time in already so just go ahead and two second timer and fire that off and then just wait for two minutes and we'll see if this abstract shot has worked right there we go that is finished now i need to be quite careful on this precarious cliff but let's have a look at that ah oh, yeah i mean the first every time it gets me every time the first time you see a long exposure and it just has that really ethereal feel it's exciting to look at really simple somewhat abstract somewhat artistic i guess but i am really happy with that i really really like it i would love to hear what you think down below in the comments but just a fantastic day of doing long exposure on a day when it's been sunny at the start and then clouded over uh, i'm here with my dad in a place that means a lot to me so it's just been a great day i'd love to hear what you think down below anyway i hope you've enjoyed it i'll see you on another one very very soon i'm adam this is first man photography and the durham heritage coast out. Hello there and welcome to the Raw Room podcast and this is the second episode of the sort of new look podcast. In today's episode I want to talk a bit about whether photographers should share their shooting locations and that has implications for the environment and all that kind of stuff and I think it's